My graduate student mentor, Stefan Bitterwolf, and I have been working on a project analyzing the microbiome of some of his lab-grown corals. The aim to better understand our world's coral reef communities is an important goal because our environment and society depend so heavily on their health. Reefs provide storm protection, saving the U.S. up to $272 billion in the case of catastrophic storm events, while also providing coastal economies with $3.4 billion per year. But recently, these pivotal environments are under unprecedented levels of stress caused by many threats that they regularly face. Bleaching, due to climate change, can lead to the mass death of corals in water with rising temperatures. And disease outbreaks are becoming more prevalent and more deadly. Stony coral tissue loss disease syndrome, shown here, is an example of this problem. Breakouts killed nearly 80% of stony corals in some regions of the Florida Keys and appears to have spread to the Caribbean. It's thought to be caused by bacteria and spread through direct contact or water circulation. Understanding how diseases like this spread and what effect they have on the coral is an important step in attempting to maintain healthy coral reefs for our society in the future. The coral microbiome has been a point of focus for several researchers because these microorganisms can each play a role in the way the coral functions. Therefore, many studies have looked at how the microbiome differs between diseased and healthy corals. These studies have found a general pattern in terms of how the bacteria in the microbiome responds to disease. This study by Meyer and colleagues shows the results from diseased corals, marked in gray on the x-axis, and healthy corals, marked in green. It shows relative frequency, or the percentage of the microbiome that a given bacterial class takes up on the y-axis, and each different color represents a different bacterial class. For instance, gamma proteobacteria takes up about 50% of our first sample's microbiome. What we see is that healthy corals are more likely to be dominated by one type of bacteria, while diseased corals tend to have more bacterial classes without one clear dominant group. So when we noticed that some of our lab-grown corals started going from the healthy corals on the left to the sick corals on the right, we thought that if we compared the bacterial microbiome of the healthy versus sick portions of the corals, that we might expect to see similar results to the previous studies we referenced. In other words, we predicted higher species evenness and diversity in diseased corals. In order to make our comparison, we preserved the symptomatic fragments and took samples from both the diseased edge and the healthy center portions of each coral. Then, a DNA extraction kit like the one seen here was used to extract the microbial DNA from our samples. The variable for 16S our RNA region, or a region of DNA used to identify different bacteria, was amplified using PCR, and you can see these bright pink bands of microbial DNA here. They were then sequenced at the University of Chicago at Illinois. They sent us back thousands of sequences like this, so we then spent two months learning how to code on a program called CHIME2 in order to turn this seemingly endless list of G's, C's, T's, and A's into taxonomic classifications, like this. Most of our sequences could be classified at least down to the order of the bacteria. In doing so, we found some interesting results and created some figures to demonstrate them. Here, we have a taxa bar plot with different coral samples on the x-axis, with disease samples on the left and healthy samples on the right. A relative frequency is on the y-axis, and each different color represents a different bacterial order. What our results show here is that our disease samples have a higher taxonomic diversity than our healthy samples, showing 20 and 23 different bacterial orders as opposed to 8, 5, and 15. Additionally, most of the orders within the disease samples have a similar relative frequency value. We also looked at evenness of the samples. This graph shows the PILU evenness scores of the disease versus the healthy groups. PILU evenness is a metric for how even or how equal in relative frequency the different bacterial orders are where the closer the score is to one, the more even the community is. We see here that the disease samples are much more even with a score of about 0.93. While these results concur with what we predicted, higher diversity and evenness in diseased corals, our small sample size prevents us from making any statistical conclusions. However, these results lead us to ask the questions, why are some bacteria present on diseased corals that aren't on healthy corals? What do they do? And do they contribute to the unhealthy state of the coral? Understanding why certain bacteria are present on corals and how they affect the health of the corals is integral in our attempts for conservation. We will continue work to see how bacterial communities change in response to specific environmental stressors, such as an experiment we designed with dissolved organic carbon as a stressor. Work such as this aims to provide ways to diagnose the stressors leading to deterioration in coral health worldwide, as well as find ways to perhaps mitigate these issues.
Thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.